Okay, just testing the sound. Uh, Ty, can you hear me okay? Is the audio coming through clear? Just very clear about that. Excellent. Okay, so this has been recorded and I will get started. My name is Samuel McAllister. I work for Autodesk Australia and I'm a senior technical solutions specialist. This is going to be covering the collections for architects. So today's agenda, we're going to be providing an overview of what's in the collections. If you're new to the collections, perhaps you've moved from suites to collections and you want to understand what might be relevant for your particular workflows. We'll be touching on the new updated format 2021 for conceptual design. We'll also be focusing on generative design for Revit 2021, which is core to the AEC collections, which is only in the AEC collections. And this is going to allow you to automate your design and documentation process. We'll have a quick update on the Unity partnership, and we'll be showcasing some case studies at the end on some customers, including Warren Amani and Bait Smart Architects. For benefiting from tools like Navisworks and 3ds Max and Recap. So for anybody who's new to building information modeling and the AEC collections, the core thing here is with these tools, you can do a lot more with the design, build, and operation workflows of the AEC industry. Um, we have a stat here from um, the World Economic Forum, uh, a minimal increase in upfront costs of about 2% to support optimized design will lead to an average life cycle savings of about 20% in total costs. So by having that information built into your intelligent BIM data, you can actually use it at the back end for operational purposes. Um, from the McGraw Hill construction report here, the benefits of BIM, um, so being able to have that information that can be used at the conceptual phase right through to costings. You can predict the costing before you go out on site. You can also extract out all the data and use it for sequence and logistics for scheduling. Of course, with clash detection, you're going to have fewer errors because you can't fudge the plan sections elevations. And you can also optimize design design workflows, which we'll be covering with general design for Revit. And finally, almost 100% um, improvement of better understanding of the design because you can see it all in 3D, walk through it, be immersed. So our core platform for building information modeling is Revit. It supports multidiscipline design workflows. So it's not just architecture. We work with mechanical, electrical, hydraulics, uh, and structural engineering and steel and concrete. The changes can be made easily once you're all set up. You can design with intelligent parametric objects, generate seamlessly your general arrangement drawings, and the data can be extended for doing analysis, whether it's energy analysis, lighting analysis, structural analysis, visualization, either through our 3ds Max platform or with add-ins to Revit. And of course, you can do your coordination with tools like Navisworks and collaboration with cloud collaboration tools, BIN360 Design. New for Revit 2021, we now have the Generative Design for Revit module. So this is the integration of the visual scripting tool Dynamo that allows you to interface with visual scripting without actually having to go into a Dynamo package, into a visual scripting package. This is where you can leverage the packages, create studies, and explore design outcomes to generate elements in Revit. So you can filter the information, you can start to look at the goals that you're trying to achieve. The one we have on the screen here is looking at the optimization of a furniture layout. And then once you've chosen the one you want, there's a tool in the bottom right hand corner to generate Revit elements. We've also 
begun our journey to improve realistic real-time views so the performance is going to be a lot faster and smoother you're going to be able to see the materials better in real time you maybe don't have to go to a third-party platform you're going to have the automatic lighting exposure control so with your exterior or interior and it now replaces the previous realistic mode we do get a lot of question from um, users who might be new to Revit or looking for high quality families for visuals. This is one of those ones to highlight called Aquatree. Uh, perhaps you might be from a landscape architecture background and you're looking for better quality 3D trees or families for doing your landscaping, hardscaping. This company provides a huge amount of high quality Revit families also on the right here if you look at the visual scripting component with Revit you have Dynamo Player so companies like this who provide content are also providing scripts to help with your design automation and you can see here they can start to look at adding uh, entourage um, grass on elements and layers etc etc you can do all this with these scripts as opposed to manually having to do it when setting up your Revit documentation platform. Um, a big feature in the 2020 re 2021 release is slanted walls. So it's really easy now to just draw a wall and instead of having apply it to a massing face, you can go to the cross section drop down and choose slanted walls and then adjust the angles. So it's a lot easier, more intuitive. It also works with curve walls as well. So it's not just restricted to a straight line wall. You can use this tool very easily and intuitive to design more complex and possibly more beautiful architectural forms. Uh, we've been improving the connection between Revit and Inventor. Inventor is part of the Autodesk platform. It's in the product design collection. You can work with Inventor data, which allows you to create ADSK files or even RFA uh, family files, and you can go between each platform. So you can either bring data in from Inventor to Revit as a family or embed the information in a family template, or you can take the data out from Revit to Inventor, which is our fabrication platform. So one instance here might be you've designed the curtain walling and you want the fabricator to now work up that curtain walling with all the necessary elements to fabricate, and then you want to see the detailed shop drawings. Your data is a loss. You can reuse that information in Autodesk Inventor for fabrication. Um, we're going to be covering uh, a few platforms today, and this is an example of a linear workflow. So we've got surveying tools, planning and design, going through conceptual design to schematic design, then looking at analysts, uh, analyzing your design, uh, detailed design and documentation, right through into some of the fabrication platforms that are inc included in the collection, um, and Inventor, which isn't in the collection, but is a platform which has interoperability with what it is core platforms in the collections so first off conceptual design some of you may have come from a sketchup background we have format included in the collection it works on mobile devices it works on the cloud it works on your desktop and allows you to do conceptual designs which you can reuse in a revit it also works with Dynamo, so visual scripting can be leveraged in Dynamo for design automation. It's integrated re uh, BIM workflow allows you to bring in your Revit families. You can reuse SketchUp files in this platform, and the data can then go back into Revit. It even works with real-world site information, and it has analysis tools for doing shadows, solar analog analysis, and conceptual energy analysis. So this is just a quick uh, workflow example of format from scratch. You can bring in aerial imagery from Bing Maps. You can bring in your city 
uh, site context, you've got tools to automate filleting, you can use the push-pull tools. As I mentioned, it works on web, iOS devices, and Windows desktops. It's got the energy analysis tools. You can use all the simple tools that you want to do your insets. You can start to use the Dynamo scripts. You can do your shadow analysis in this platform. You can even start to look at the pseudo color overlay for the lighting analysis on the facades. As you go through, you can add materials as well. You can customize your materials. You can adjust the UVW maps. You've got Boolean tools for cutting information. You can even bring in scripts for your structural columns and do the layouts via that. You've got simple tools for drawing on faces and arraying those tools. You've got extrusion tools to cut for windows. You've got Dynamo scripts for stairs and curtain walls. And here we have SketchUp trees that were brought in from 3D Warehouse, which we can start to reuse inside of Foreman as well. So as you can see here, it's an intuitive push-pull platform. You can do instances, you can do sweeps, sweep paths along uh, splines. You can start to manipulate the scales, non-uniform scales if you need to use it, and then you can adjust materials accordingly to get that conceptual look and feel. So it's a very easy platform. It's all fully included, the Formula Pro inside the collection. You can do all these different types of styles that you want, but you don't have to throw away any information. Um, it can be reused again here inside of Revit. It even saves to Bid360 docs, so you can bring it in from that platform as well. So if you haven't tried Formit, if you're new to the collection and you want to make an easy sketch design start, Formit is the platform to help you on your journey. We also have workflows for visualization from Formit. So here we have the graphical interface with Formit Pro. We have some SketchUp trees in there and some SketchUp people. Here we have the data that's been brought into Revit. We haven't lost any of the materials or the geometry. and We can navigate around the project using the new Revit realistic views. And here we have conceptual design, which we can quickly visualize and be immersed in using this new visualization platform in Revit that integrates with Formit. Um, other things we have here, when you go to model and format, you can do your design options. So you can turn, put those on layers and turn them on and off. The levels can be set up. So if you set up your levels inside of format and bring it into Revit, it will reuse that information. It's got a lofting tool. So if you want to do something a bit more advanced, you can put plates on the levels, faces on the levels, and then loft between them. Here we can also add levels to that lofted form here. And when we bring into Revit, that data is not lost. We've still got massing faces, we've still got levels for us to work up. You can also see here, it's very robust. You can bring in a lot of detailed site context and it will hold up. Um, other things we have here, there is a, a, an API with Format now, which you can write your own scripts for. You can, utilize some of these to connect across into Revit. So we can start to mass up a design. We can add um, uh, colors to that design. We can also give it certain attributes. And then when we bring it into Revit, that data is not lost. So you can see here, we're tagging the information. So we're using the mass floor tags we can start to read the square footage or square meters. Um, you can start to tag that information and get information off the format model. So it's not just say throw away massing information, it's intelligent information that's retained across the platform which can be brought to Revit and then scheduled. Moving into um, the general design for Revit, this is where we're moving towards what we call outcome-driven design. We're trying to do all these different iterations that allow us to optimize the design for the best performance. The image you're seeing here, this thing down here on the right, is actually a 3D printed drone casing. 
So inside of our general design for manufacturing tools, you can actually do your design, set all the parameters that it needs to be to make it strong enough, and then optimize it through numerous iterations. And then this will allow you to 3D print a design which is stronger than say a standard fabricated design. So if we look at some of the trends that are going on in the architecture industry, we know more now, more than ever now, um, everybody is working in different locations, working from home. We need to be a mobile workforce. We are all starting to look at some of these new emerging design technologies for automation, form generation, optimization, moving into AI and machine learning. Sustainability is a big thing uh, in numerous states um, and with um, the Australian government and um, other, uh, other uh, countries around the world needing to enforce uh, sustainability goals. Um, you need to have tools to do real-time analysis. And then finally, depending on the procurement, and also what you're doing with the data, there's new changing roles and responsibilities and services. So depending on whether it's a, a design bid build or it's actually a design and build procurement workflow, um, sometimes it might be um, an integrated project delivery. Um, you might be getting into lean construction with the consultants and contractors uh, who is responsible for the data that is shared throughout that project life cycle. Um, so if we look at um, general design for Revit, just looking at, at one part of this. So um, hopefully you fix your fees for your projects. If you're lucky, you can get away with an alley rate. Um, but when you come to do those fixed fees for certain stages, you want to negotiate the right type of fee, the right chunk of fee, so you can end up with a profit at the end of that stage. So there's a bit of negotiation, and then once you've negotiated that fixed fee, you need to look at how you can make your team more efficient to deliver the work on time without the timesheets you know, going out of sync um, and losing money. You want to be able to be efficient to actually uh, make a profit. So what you'll be doing here is looking at what's the value add to help you make more profit when you come to negotiate and do a certain scope of works for your projects. And this is visual scripting. So um, some examples that are out there, this is one from Artsin Bioko. This is a LinkedIn learning course looking at how you can do a steel structural portal um, using the Dynamo script. So you can load in these files, load in your Revit family components and use the script to generate a structural framing setup here in one minute runtime with the script and Revit versus trying to manually build in Revit, which is one hour and two minutes. If we look at the documentation side, we've got Dynamo Player, and this is Paul Winter from Parametric Monkey, who has numerous scripts to work with um, our platforms and other platforms. The ones here he has though works with the Dynamo player where you can start to automate some of the things like putting elements on work sets, renumbering rooms, rename rooms by model group. He even has the amount of time that it can save you and a dollar figure assigned to that. So by using these scripts, you can automate some of those mundane things, be more efficient and make more profit margin. So the generative design framework that we have here um, so if anybody who's new to general design, um, you don't have to be too overwhelmed. You're leveraging the scripts in the pre-general design workspace. So a consultant like Paul Winter from Parameter Monkey could provide you with a script, or you may have someone internal who can do the script. You will grab that pre-set up general design script, load it into the general design forever platform. You'll evaluate design options, you adjust some of the filters and evolve it until you're happy with the right solution. You can then explore it and then push it into Revit. So what this is is where you have data input, which is your script. 
you'll generate it, it will drive the shapes, you'll look at how it's going to perform, then you'll use the um, evolution of the design space data, then you'll do that final exploration, and then you'll generate it so it becomes project data. And this is the general design for River. It is available um, with the collection with 2021. The, you can potentially use it with River 2020. Um, we had been evolving it from Refinery in the past, which was its beta name. But um, if you want to get the most out of it, uh, use it in the collection with Revit 2021. So um, some customers who are starting to use these tools, this is a retail designer, uh, Stamos Designs. They were able to use a script to do the, the layout of their liquor store here. So all you need are the Revit walls, and a room area you had the script loaded in you have your families of course in the template and this will go through and it will run 40 different design options within minutes so they can look at the locations of the cash register the ratio between shop and inventory storage aisle spacing especially important with COVID-19 um, even views to the seller's field of vision so if you're looking at things like supermarkets and planograms this could be incredibly helpful and incredibly efficient to help you with your workflows. Um, another one here that ships with the Revit platform. This is, let's go back here. This is a, a massing tool. So let's say you're working on a competition, you're trying to win work for your business. You can load in this building massing script. You can start to look at some of the goals you need to achieve. So you have a side envelope here and you want to look at the ratio of retail space at the bottom, and office space or residential space at the top. You've got these filters down here at the bottom, which start to look at the orientation, um, the percentages, uh, the costings. All of this can be run in the general design um, tool. So creating study, exploring results. And at the very end here, um, if I just pause it, we have in the right hand corner create river elements and you can see the one that's met all our design criteria has been created inside the river platform automatically for us if you want to get uh started on this we have the general design website um it's the general design primer we have data sets which you can download from this website so we do have numerous sample workflows, and this is available for architects and engineers. There's even um, a starting point where some customers are starting to share their stuff. So please check out the General Design Primer website if you want to get access to some startup scripts, which you can use on the platform today. Um, as mentioned, sustainable design is uh, a, a big thing now, um, especially here in Australia um, with um, lighting, like looking at lighting analysis and where you can put photovoltaics, looking at shading. Um, so here we have a script using Dynamo on a facade of a tower. And what we're doing here is we're loading the script into the uh, Revit environment. So this is the Dynamo tool. We're wanting to look at um, the amount of light moving around that building at a certain time of day or year. The two things I need to use here is the selection of the top floor and selection of the bottom floor to generate the facade. So all I'm doing is I'm leveraging a script that one of my colleagues made. I'm selecting the bottom floor, I select the top floor, um, and I can run that. And what it's gonna do is it's going to give me a curved facade here. So instantly I can reuse this, this on any project. So it could be a shorter building, a taller building. I can start to grab these things again and again and reuse the script. What it's gonna do is it's going to tell me um, where the sun's gonna be hitting at certain times of the day. I can also start to adjust the curtain walling panels here. So with the slider, I can drop them down to six by six. 
Um, uh, so what I can do when, I, when it does that, I can rerun it. You can see here is like 12 by 12. I can rerun it and that's changing the amount of panels here automatically in Revit. So there's these nice little tools that you can use to either do analysis or to start to um, automate some of the components. Included in the collection is Insight. Um, Insight allows you to do analysis for uh, solar daylighting and energy analysis. So this example is just using it to run solar analysis around the building and we can start to do, choose different settings and here you start to see the uh, results like how many uh, kilowatts per hour per meter it's producing. We have the lighting analysis for the building as well on the internal component. So uh, this actually allows you to use the old Ecotech style, which we acquired a number of years back, and now it's built into Revit and built into our cloud analysis tools, where we can start to look at the sun um, penetrating the building at certain times of the year. So you can start to see here, we have the illuminance graph, and it's providing us strong illuminance into a lot of these office spaces. Perhaps in the back here, you're not getting enough lighting. This is where you need to consider some artificial lighting. You'd also want to consider uh, shading devices. And this can be done using the cloud rendering engine. Again, it's got a luminance values down here on the right. So we're starting to see the strong natural light penetrating the space. It even looks at the IES data and the light fitting. So you're looking at maybe uh, 3,200 roughly for a typical light fitting or 2,900 depending on the spec. But uh, that's been read here as well. And we can start to see the darker parts of the space that maybe need some, some illuminance. With this platform, you can also do animated sun studies. So this is like a one hour sun study, just doing one hour intervals. And we can start to see towards the latter part of the day that we're getting direct sunlight penetration. So here in the afternoon, in the late afternoon, this is where you're going to get the glare. And this is where you might want to consider some sort of external shading device. Again, this is data from the uh, river platform pushed to the cloud doing analysis. Um, other newer partners that we have in the energy analysis space is this carbon uh, embodied analysis tool from EC3. It works on top of our BIM360 platform. Basically, it does uh, takeoffs automatically on the cloud and it connects them to the EC3 platform and you can start to look at the embodied carbon in the materials. So if you want to know more about that, uh, uh, buildingtransparency.org is their main site. And you can start to look at using this tool to make recommendations for specifying low carbon construction materials. Um, so with visualization, you get 3ds Max and you get our new rendering engine called Arnold. Um, an example of this being used was it was being used on the Star Wars films. Uh, the Force Awakens, for example, here, Arnold is the rendering engine that's simple to use but gives you realistic uh, renderings that's used in movies. We have the Arnold database materials. You can actually go to the Arnold website and download these for 3ds Max, for Maya, for other platforms here, and these are all ready to go. For Revit users, you can link your data from Revit into 3ds Max and then use Arnold as your rendering engine to get photorealistic output. Um, we also have partnership with Unity. So Unity ha uh, have their Reflect platform, so you can push data from Revit to Unity. Um, and then with the Unity engine, you can get it photorealistic. So um, Unity, if you're not aware of it, it's been around for, for a while. If you check out some of their films online, it's pretty incredible what they're doing with their platform. It will connect with Maya and 3ds Max as well. The new tool they have with Revit allows you to get into 
uh, XR experiences. So this is AR, VR. Um, there's live linking that will go from Revit directly into Unity Reflect. They also provide um, free downloads of some of their sample data sets. So you have the Unity London office with all the assets and you can fire this up and walk through it. It's pretty cool. There's the Korea office. There's the Tokyo office, which is incredibly realistic. Um, and they, uh, I'm not showing them all today, but they do have driving simulators as well that work with our uh, InfoWorks platform, our civil 3D platform. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Clash detection. Um, so anybody who's new to clash detection, this is where you can load in all the models and automatically see whether there's some errors in your design and your consultant's design. And this is our Navisworks platform. Navisworks is incredibly powerful. It will read uh, up to 56 file formats and variations of the formats. It has four core components. It has a clash detection, which is probably the most popular. It has a timeliner for construction sequencing. It has a quantity takeoff, which we export data onto a workbook. And it even has a rendering platform. Uh, we do have a connecting with our BIM 360 component as well, which I'll show in a second. Um, just a quick video here showing you the basic elements of clash detection. It's very easy to use. You simply load in, you merge or aggregate, append uh, your models. So it could be the structural model and the architect's model or the structural model versus the MEP model. Um, you have different types of clash types. You can just use the default ones to run the first clash. This will go through all the mechanical components and start to look where it's clashing with the structural components. So it's incredibly powerful. You can start to group things. You can export out an HTML report. You can start to look at um, what um, its status is. You can assign it to a user. So I've assigned this one to Stefan. Please make beans bigger so we can fit our ducks through it. He may or may not do that. But um, from here, um, with this, you can export out that report and uh, send it through to them where they can start to see what needs to be uh, fixed in the model for the next clash detection meeting. The next evolution of clash detection, this is the BIN360 model coordination platform. This is not included in the collection, it is a, a separate purchase, but uh, you don't have to go out to other platforms to do the work. You can um, do it all in the cloud. So here I have a connection, I'm using a container file from my BIN360 design environment, and I've loaded these uh, cached copies of the models into model coordination. I can then choose the files that I want to clash and go to view them. And here we have um, three models that I want to uh, check the clashes for. And we'll automatically uh, group the clashes and color code them. So here it's featuring the structure in green and the mechanical in red. And I can go and create an issue with that. So instead of um, you know writing a report and then sending it as an HTML, I can do this in the cloud platform. I can assign it to the user. So if I want to send it to Stefan again choose a date on when I need to fix it, and I can go create, and he'll now get an email notification that will take him into the model and see the items that need to be fixed. We do have some new things coming as well. There's also a, um, a tool which allows you to do issues back into Revit. That's just around the corner. It's in beta at the moment, but this is a very powerful tool for clash detection. Um, I want to get into um, LOD 400. Um, some people call it level of detail, level of development. This is the fabrication component of building information modeling. If you want to know more about this, the NATSPEC team have created a really good document here 
which explains LOD. Um, so LOD 400 is the fabrication and assembly information. Uh, over here on the right, you've even got LOD 500, which goes more into the, the as-built for facilities, maintenance and management. So um, well, why do it? We do have a number of initiatives that are happening here and around the world for LOD 400. Um, the core one uh, here is Bin Nepal, so they're actually having their uh, conference virtually today and tomorrow. They have design content, LOD 300 and 350, but they also provide manufacturer's content that are certified by the manufacturer and can be used for commissioning in the LOD 500 model tools that you get inside the collection to allow you to produce LOD 400 is advanced steel and the Revit precast concrete. Inventor's outside of the collection, but you can do workflows with Inventor. Um, if you're an architect, why would you bother to use these? Well, if you look at um, architects like Richard Rogers, as shown here, they use the detailing of the LOD 400 steel work to promote the aesthetic of their model. So with the AEC collection, you now get the advanced steel platform. Um, it used to be a separate purchase, and you can use this um, very intuitively inside of River. So here we have the structural connection settings. I can go and load in the relevant settings that are needed for um, my connection that I'm trying to create between these um, beams. So what we've got is we simply have the database loaded. We select the three components that we want to connect. We hit the connection component. We choose the type of joint that you want. If you're not an expert in steel connections, you can also talk to your fabricator. They can advise you. Um, here, you can load in this eye bracing spice for gusset. And this will take all those elements and load into the project for you. So here we automatically have a connection. Now it's not perfect, but we can go in to modify the parameters. And when you go into modify the parameters, you'll find it's got a really good interface to intuitively allow you to modify all the details that are needed for that um, bracing spice full gusset. So um, incredibly powerful tool if you're passionate about the details in your project. Um, another thing we have here is precast concrete. I'm a big fan of precast concrete and the detailing of precast concrete. You can do this in the Revit platform. You don't need to actually work with anything more than a generic basic wall, and you can convert it into fabrication parts. So again, you can work closely with your concrete fabricator. They can help you with the configuration based on uh, how the factory set up. So here we can go and look at the um, lifters, we can look at the parts of the solid wall, there may be certain um, sizes that the fabricator can work to. There's also different cam exports here as well. So all of this information can be set up and you can then select that generic wall, hit the split button to segment them, and it loads in all those parts and components you need for fabrication. So perhaps you're a minimalist architect and you're wanting to showcase the concrete precast panels, but you want them detailed in a certain way. This will allow you to do it with the actual real world components. Um, beyond here, if you're wanting to share this information out on a sheet, you can use the uh, assembly component to export, export our information. So we've just got and generated that. And what we have here is a sheet where we can drop in our uh, connection schedule, our part schedules, our part lists, material takeoffs. All of this can be dragged and dropped in. Um, potentially, there are scripts to automate this as well. Um, uh, but basically, this is automating some of the workflows from the generic wall using the precast concrete panel. And I have a drawing here, which potentially could be used as a shop drawing. Uh, finally, with 
prefab. Um, so prefab's not new. It has been used for a number of years. This is uh, from the Foster and Partners HSBC, HSBC Tower in Hong Kong to speed up the build process. They had to move to prefabrication of the bathroom pods. Uh, had to go and get them done in Japan. These are the drawings and the models that they used in the day to work it all out. Um, a very complex high-tech building with a lot of um, parts with the hydraulics and um, the, all the mechanical and electrical components. So all of this had to be worked out before they fabricated it. You can now do this with the inventor components. So the data, um, the LOD 400 data from inventor can be brought into Revit and reused. So here we have a bathroom pod with all the um, cold rolled structural members. Um, we can section through this model to start to see the toilet partitions, the brackets that fix those toilet partitions to the wall. Every nut and bolt is included here. But what it also has is the connections of the pipes. So I can take this from Inventor and load it into Revit and use it to connect into my hydraulics part of the Revit model. So here we have the hot and cold feed for this bathroom. I can go to level six and I can look at the parts that have come from Inventor. I can draw the pipe directly off Inventor and connect it into my Revit model. So it's not lost data, it's a fabrication component that ties into Revit and you can connect up the hydraulics here as shown. Um, finally, just to wrap up, other customers who are benefit, benefiting from the AEC collections is Warren and Marnie. They use um, a lot of tools in our platform. They're heavily committed to building information modeling. Um, they use Max, Revit, Navisworks and their daily workflows. Also recap their headquarter out of Christchurch, New Zealand, where they had the Christchurch earthquake rebuild. So recap was heavily used for laser scanning existing buildings. They use Dynamo for uh, uh, automation and they're using tools like 3ds Max Interactive, which is included in the collection for VR. Um, another user here is uh, Batesmart, and we have uh, the full video of this on our Autodesk YouTube site. This is a prefab building that they did with Lendlease in Brisbane. So it's a sustainable building. It used glue lamb timber beams. They worked out all the details on Revit. They did clash detection and Navisworks. They visualized in 3ds Max. This was then fabricated by Len Lease and assembled on site incredibly quickly. So if you want to know more about this, um, it's on uh, King Street. Len Lease has some videos on it. We've got some videos on our website. That's just a quick snapshot. This is Bait Smart Architects working with LOD 400 data to fabricate a sustainable, um, you know, low carbon material of glue lamb and timber to do a prefabricated building. So, so with that, just wanted to uh, summarize. Um, we've covered some of the tools in the AC collections, including Format for our conceptual designs, General Design for Revit, um, a quick update on the Unity Partnership, and then uh, showcased some uh, customers using tools in the collection. Um, with that, I'll now um, open up the floor to Q&A before I lose my voice. Uh, maybe Ty might want to uh, moderate any questions for me to answer. Yeah, hi everyone. If you um, could... Uh... Uh, and with yourself if you want to ask a question or send through your message uh, to the uh, message panel there and we can reply to you yeah feel free to type it into the uh the chat box yeah. 
Uh, how quick can a novice learn all fantastic stuff, particularly old school architects? That's a good question. Um, I kind of think of myself as an old school architect myself. I started on the drawing board with the rotary pens and fitting uh, the uh, the sheets into the old chemical machines. So um, it is a lot easier to learn this now, probably because of YouTube. Um, pretty much if you look for Revit tutorials, there are thousands on YouTube. Um, there's a huge amount of information on the Autodesk forums and the Autodesk Knowledge Network. Um, that's a great place to start. But um, yeah, usually there's a lot of information out there. Um, of course, work with your partner to um, get hands-on or bespoke training. But it is a lot easy for um, us old school architects to, to learn how to use these platforms now. Um, a question on BIM 360 and Inventor. Um, yeah, so BIM 360 is not part of the collection, nor is Inventor. Um, you have several modules to BIM 360. You've got BIM 360 Design, which is used for Revit Cloud work sharing. That's a, a separate purchase, but you can um, choose to subscribe to that uh, monthly or yearly or uh, quarterly, I think. Um, I always have to uh, check our website for the latest on that. Um, so BIN360 design. Um, we do also have um, BIN360 docs, should you just want to use the document management tool. Um, but there's, there are numerous plans. Um, you can see here, if you just want to use it monthly, it's 165. Um, and yearly, you can do it for uh, 1,330. And these are just the suggested uh, retail prices on our website. Um, and inventor, inventor, um, inventor is you can buy it separately, or you can get it in a uh, product collection. Um, so there is a lot of information. There's uh, student licenses here. You can do free trials. Should you want to use it, um, we also have Fusion 360. Should anybody want to look at that? Um, that's a newer cloud product. And it's actually, uh, I think there are a lot of specials on that one at the moment. Um, so that's our next evolution of the 40% off Fusion 360. That's our next evolution of Inventor. And you can get this for $75 a month or $354 a year. So um, it doesn't connect to Revit perfectly at the moment, but it has all the features of Inventor and we are always striving to connect our platforms together. So there's a couple options there. You can look at Inventor, trial it, or um, test out Fusion 360 as well. Um, the last thing here, just um, if you need a go-to website, we have the Autodesk uh, Knowledge Knowledge Network, can't spell, but this is a really good place to go to for us old school architects. You have everything here. So support and learning, um, you know, a clean install. Sometimes you may have registry information left over from other platforms that you may have used in the past. You can do all this sort of stuff. So um, it's a great, place to find everything about our platforms. Uh, so if you want to know about, um, again, um, so River products, and here it's intuitive, it's easy to find a way around. Here is the learning information. 
and there are videos and data sets to help get you up and running. So you'll find here, downloads, troubleshootings, forums, um, it's all here to uh, get you on your way to benefiting from your AEC collection subscription. Okay, so I think that's uh, the end of the questions. Um, Ty, anything you want to add before we wrap up? Sure. All right. Uh, thanks for the another great webinar, there, Sam. I think it's it's really good, uh, useful for information for everyone. Um, and just after this webinar, uh, we will be posting this recorded session for anyone that wants to watch this again. And any products or services inquiry, um, even training uh, as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you further. Other than that, thank you, Sam. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ty. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.